Amigas y amigos, buenos días. Good morning. Thank you very much for this very kind invitation and congratulations on the celebration of this event. The idea is the CEO states person leading the charge in the transition to the low carbon economy. It's not new, but it's certainly very much needed. In the complex world of today, there is no choice but for the sustainability movement, the CSR within corporations, to assume and embody an ever-increasing and larger role, a greater responsibility within our societies. After 10 years of business experience, followed by 12 years of public service, and a stint of some good years as a trustee of global NGOs, I am absolutely convinced that in the world of today, we need to reinvent the development equation along business lines. And that is also why I am back in the private sector. Yes, governments are not corporations, and of course, corporations are not governments. Although I do have to say that there is a lot of politics in both. But there is a lot to be said for taking the dynamism, the entrepreneurial spirit, the agility, the ability to resource capital that the public, that the private sector has, and intersecting more of that into public decision making and the sphere of policy. It's all about what the world needs today of our corporate leaders, and that is CEOs that are not only CEOs in the context of their responsibility to shareholders, but are also CEO statespersons in their responsibility that goes beyond the shareholder dimension. CEO statements will lead their companies down a track that will be clearly recognized by consumers who are becoming better educated with respect to the global intricacies that we live, and with consumers behind our efforts, shareholders will become increasingly happy. If there is one field where we need the CEO statesman urgently, it is a field of the environment. And as Ian was mentioning some minutes ago, we need to calibrate our messaging here with respect to the environment to paint it as what it is, a tremendous opportunity for entrepreneurship and for the private sector. The opportunity is backed up by math. Y las matemáticas no mienten. Math doesn't lie. We know that we've had 280 parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere for hundreds of years. Today, 200 years after the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, we're up to 385. We are accumulating three additional parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere every year. Times 90 to the end of the century, it's 270 plus the 385 that we have today is 655. That has us on a trajectory by the end of the century, plus minus five degrees centigrades. The last time we had plus five degrees centigrades was three million years ago. Crocodiles were swimming in the North Pole. And the last time we had minus five degrees centigrades was only 10,000 years ago in the Ice Age. Clearly, that is not an environment conducive for the types of societies that we aspire to and where we want to run our businesses. And that is the opportunity, because what a tremendous opportunity it is to shift from that, where the math and the scientific evidence is behind us to back us up as we shift and move towards a low-carbon economy, which means reinventing the way we work the way we transport ourselves, 
the way we live, the way we construct our societies, and think of the tremendous opportunity for entrepreneurial creativity, for new business models to erupt as we reinvent everything with respect to society as we have come to know it today. It is clearly the economic opportunity of all times. Clearly the economic opportunity of all times. Once upon a time, as was uh, announced here a couple of minutes ago, I was the uh, CEO of Costa Rica Inc., which would also be described as president of Costa Rica. I know this makes good business sense. Costa Rica is a country with limited resources. We're not up there amongst the top five in per capita GDP. And yet, by transitioning to low carbon, we were able to create new jobs in bioprospecting, working with the pharmaceutical world. We were able to set aside 34% of our land mass in national parks that became the home to a term we called and branded ecotourism, today the second dollar earner in the country's economy. We moved to 90% of our energy being renewable, got us off that track of having to follow oil, whether it's up to 146, down to 90, today 113, and surely going up in a very important way as we move forward. We enacted a carbon tax back in 1995 and invested the carbon tax in a fund to purchase environmental services. And at the end of four years, our economy was growing by 9% and direct foreign investment coming into the country was between 7 and 8% of GDP. It can be done. It is good business. And that is what today we pursue from a dingle, from a different angle within the carbon war room which I chair. The carbon war room is a Richard Branson and 14 other global entrepreneurs idea to organize an institution, a body, whatever you want to call it, that would look at carbon with a scaled up version of what we need to achieve. Very much based on the concept put forward by Churchill in this country many years ago, that in order to win the war, you needed to have a war room. The carbon war room is to win the war on carbon. Our mission statement is to identify sectors of the global economy where either by working with governments as CEO statesmen to change policies, or by working with business to reinvent business models, we can make good business out of reducing carbon emissions at the gigaton level. So we have already identified 25 sectors of the global economy where this can be done. Aviation, para empezar por la casa, as we say in Spanish, is one of those. The built environment is a tremendous opportunity to lower emissions and create jobs around the world. The shipping industry is another example. One billion tons of carbon are emitted by 100,000 ships that are out there on our oceans. Of those 100,000 ships, 65,000 are fishing. The 35,000 remaining that do the global trade that we are all involved in if they were a nation, would be the sixth largest emitter in the world. You take those ships, you put them into a dry dock where you create jobs in depressed areas, you invest six to eight million per ship with which you mobilize resources and you get the financial industry to invest in the real economy instead of investing in financial engineering and you roll these ships out of, the, of, the, of these uh, yards six to eight weeks later, producing 30% less emissions, 30% less cost of fuels, $50 billion saved by these ships worldwide. If your company is doing something with shipping, you're shipping abroad, you're shipping into your markets, 
you're getting spare parts, whatever. Part of those 50 billion that we're overspending today is coming out of your corporate pockets. So, we need information to flow better in terms of getting more of us on these reinventing our livelihoods moving forward ideas. We've put up a website called shippingefficiency.org, www.shippingefficiency.org. So now you can go to www.shippingefficiency.org. We have 50,000 vessels lifted with, with all of their efficiency standards. And if you are hiring a ship or contracting a ship to bring in or take out your merchandise, you can see how efficient that ship is, and you can begin to negotiate for more efficient ships. That is what gets the job to begin to get done, and that is what unleashes capital, which is what we need, and entrepreneurial ideas to come into the space. Let me finish up. There is no planet B. We go through lives with a plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. We go through our corporate lives with strategy one, strategy two, and if something fails, maybe a third one. We don't have that luxury with respect to the planet. We need to get it right. There is no choice between the environment and the economy. That is a false choice. You can make both of them a good business proposition. This is the part of the world where the Industrial Revolution started that has created so many good things around the world. This would be a perfect home for the revolution towards low carbon to be started and promoted around the world. Muchísimas gracias.